Okay, we're gonna start looking at part two of the test. So there's a few of these that I'm gonna, we're not gonna have on the part two of the test. I'll scratch those off as we go. The first one's this factor problem on 7-125. We're not gonna do C. Okay, now if I look at 125 here, factor each polynomial completely. When you have um, your leading coefficient is just an x squared, then you can kind of bypass a lot of the parts of your area model that you're used to doing. So we don't have to do the whole box. We can just actually go right to our diamond problem or x. You can put negative 56 on top negative one from right here in the bottom. TJ, yeah. can you take out some notes please? Write this down. Uh, yeah. Okay, and what two numbers multiply to negative 56 but add to negative one? Seven and eight, which one of those is negative? Eight. And that goes right to your factors of x minus eight x plus 7. That's it. Now when your leading coefficient here is not 1, so on this x squared it's 3, now we have to do the area model. So to do the area model here, Draw my box, 3x squared and a 1. Those multiply to 3x squared. And then this negative 4x goes in the bottom of my diamond problem. And what two numbers multiply to 3x squared but add to negative 4x? One and three, yeah, and they're gotta be negative. So negative one X, negative three X. Okay, <clears throat> so I put a negative three X and a negative one X. Okay, and then what two things multiply a three X squared? Should have a three X here. So I can factor the, that out of both this bottom row. X here. 3x times negative 1 gives me negative 3x, and x times negative 1 gives me negative 1x. So now our final factor, x minus 1, 3x minus 1, from right here. Done. <coughs> Questions on B? Now D here, this one's a little bit tricky. Factor completely would mean that we need to factor out, see if there's a number that actually can be factored out of both those terms. So what number can factor into 2x squared and negative 50? <coughs> what number can I take out of 2x squared and negative 50? Two. So I factor a two out. X squared minus 25. Again, we could go to our diamond problem because the coefficient here is an X squared. So I can think about it again like this, that's X squared. So I can skip the whole area model So negative 25, but then my middle term, my x term, there is none. There's no x term here. So that would be zero. So what two numbers multiply to negative 25 and add to zero? Five and negative five. And when you don't have a middle term, that's what's gonna happen. Is they're gonna be conjugates of each other. So your final answer here, two times x plus five, 
times x minus 5. All right, questions on D. Okay, let's look at 126, which I will say we're only going to look at A here. Now, this says solve using any method. So I look at this, I think maybe I can factor it. Maybe it's possible to factor. But if I can't see the answer for factoring, I go right to the quadratic formula. Okay, so the quadratic formula, definitely have this in your notes. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So again, if I factored it, so for instance, if I could factor it to make it look like that, and I saw that right away. That's faster than using the quadratic formula. For instance, if I, did, if I had to solve this equal to zero, the answer would be x equals one, x equals one third. But this one, I, I really can't see the factors right away, so I'm gonna jump right to quadratic formula. So our a term would be two. What would our b be? What's the b term? It's not x, but what's the coefficient on the b? It's not 1, though. Negative 1. And c, negative 5. So that's what we're going to substitute into the quadratic formula. So we're going to have x equals the opposite of negative 1 plus or minus square root negative 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 5 all over 2 times 2. Now I would not suggest trying to put this all in the calculator at once. I look at it as three different parts. We have this first part. We have this whole part over here. And then we have the bottom. If you look at it as three separate parts, it makes it easier for, for simplifying typically. So if I just look at that first part, the opposite of negative one, that's just a one. Plus or minus, and I'm gonna jump to the bottom here, two times two is four. But then on the bottom of that fraction, and then that, that pink highlighted part's a little bit more difficult. I'm going to start over here on the right side. Negative 4 times 2 times negative 5. That would be a 40. 4 times 5 is 20. Negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. Times 2 is 40. Plus the negative 1 squared is 1. So that means that whole pink part is a square root of 41. Now that's also what tells me that it's not possible to factor, bless you. So how do I know right away now it's not possible to factor? What's that? Kind of, close, I mean it has to do with that 41. When I take the square root of 41, what am I gonna get? A decimal, an, an irrational number. If it were 16, square root of 16, then that would factor. Because that would be plus or minus 4. So that the fact that it has a square root of 41 makes it non-factorable. So I'm glad I jumped right to this. Okay, this is where I use my calculator. And again, I do it in parts. So how do you get 40? I know you did negative 4 times negative 5. Negative 4 times negative 5 is 20 times 2 is 40. So why do you do it that way? From that side? No. Because if, this, if I'm looking at this whole expression right there, I have to do multiplication before I do addition. So then how come you couldn't just do 4 times 2? You could. It's to me, 4 times 5 is 20 times 2 is easier than doing 4 times 2 times 5. Okay. Either way, it's all 40. I'll just make sure. Yeah. 
So when I type this on my calculator, you can kind of see where I did it. But I would do one plus root 41, oops, one plus square root 41, enter, 7.4, then divide by four, 1.85 equals 1.85. And the reason I do it that way is because if I do it all at once, one plus square root 41 divided by four, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna do the root 41 divided by four first, and then add a one. So the order of operation would be wrong. So that's why I always do the top first. So one minus root 41, enter, divide by four. negative 1.35, negative 1.35, there are my two answers. All right, now um, on 128, we're gonna have three quadrilaterals, A and C for sure on the test, and then there's one that I'm gonna show you that's gonna be slightly different. So A, what do I know about these two angles right here and here? <coughs> They're equal, so I can set them equal. 3x plus 25 equals 2x plus 50. Subtract the 2x from both sides, subtract the 25 from both sides. x equals 25. Set them equal and solve. It says to justify your solutions with a definition or a theorem. Um, I'm not too worried about that on the test. If, if I see that you set it up with made they're equal, then I know that you know the theorem, which is the opposite angles would be equal in a parallelogram. Now rhombus, what do I know about this angle in the middle right here? What do, what happens with the, the, those diagonals? Yeah, they they add to not are they equal ninety? So they, they're perpendicular. So I can set that equation up, 4x minus two equals 90. 4x plus two to both sides. 4x equals 92. 92 divided by four is 23, oops, 23. Okay, and now the last one, which is not on the C or D <coughs> that you'd have to do for the test, so I'll just call it, let's call it E. If I give you a kite, Okay, and I call this, um, yes, last problem. If I call this three, and that's four, and then I'll call this six, and I'll call it eight. All right, and then I want to find the perimeter. <coughs> so I need to find all the way around this. Well, what do I know with this middle angle in a kite? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So how can I find, say, this side right here? The Pythagorean theorem. Now, it's a three, four, five right triangle, so that's already a five. Three, four, five right triangle. Now these two sides are equal, so that's also a five. This has to be a four also, but don't add that to your perimeter. So now for this other side down here, I'm gonna have to use Pythagorean theorem because four and eight, 
do not make a nice triple. So I'm gonna go four squared plus eight squared equals C squared. That's 16 plus 64 equals C squared. 80 equals C squared, that's square root 80. And if I <coughs> just round it off a little bit, it's 8.9. So this would be 8.9. And then what's this side over here? 8.9. So my perimeter, I'm gonna go five plus five plus 8.9 plus 8.9 which is 27.8. And that would be your last question on the test. Gavin. I took the square root of 80. Sure.